Making it to the top of the AFL mountain is extremely difficult for many wanting to play elite level football. These players squandered their chances at elite careers, starting with Chris Yaron, who was drafted with pick six by Carlton in the 2008 draft. Yaron was touted as the most talented prospect in that year's draft. Carlton's intentions were to slot the speedy goal kicker into the forward line to assist the likes of Eddie Betts and Brendan Favola. As a junior, Yaron played with Swan Districts, making an instant impression when he debuted with a haul of eight goals. In the 13 games played for Swan Districts, Yaron kicked 39 goals. At the Blues, his early years were primarily in the forward line, teaming up with Eddie Betts, Jeff Garlett, and Santanta O'Halpin in the full forward to form a group the media affectionately nicknamed Santanta's Little Helpers. Yaron would contribute 19 goals that season. The following two seasons, Yaron would play exclusively as a rebound halfback, which is where he hit his stride as a player, proving him a damaging backman with his elite speed and precision kicking ability. Yaron would also be awarded the goal of the year in 2012 with an amazing run and carry goal he had kicked in round one against the Tigers. With the exit of Brett Radden as head coach and the Mick Malthouse takeover at the Blues, Yaron was moved back to the forward line, kicking 47 goals in two seasons. Over the course of the 2015 season, Yaron would face disciplinary action from Carlton for failing to meet club standards, including failing to be punctual. This resulted in a team punishment from the then interim coach, John Barker, where all players were made to undergo an arduous session of swimming, all for the actions of one in Yaron. At the end of the 2015 season, Yaron was traded to Richmond. Many were shocked when an image of Yaron circulated the media that showed the player clearly out of shape. Yaron would fail to play a game for the Tigers and eventually become delisted, ending his career of 119 games. Years later, in 2017, Yaron would speak candidly about the struggle with addiction he had had, and he believes ruined his AFL career. In the video, Yaron confessed that he was introduced to drugs by a family member, which had destroyed every aspect of his life, from footy to his relationships and his financial security. Yaron stated that his addiction occurred during his time with Richmond, it is unclear whether the drug addiction occurred during his time with the Blues. In 2019, Yaron was arrested and sentenced to five years in prison, of which he served three years, being released in 2022. Another Carlton player in Josh Bootsma was selected with the 22nd pick in the 2011 draft. His father, Brad, played for South Fremantle in the Western Australian Football League and for Fremantle in the AFL in the 90s. Bootsma quickly became somewhat of a cult figure at Carlton with his unique look with golden curls and a skinny frame. Bootsma would play predominantly in Carlton's VFL side. In 2012, he played five games as a defender and in 2013, he played a further nine games. However, in June of 2014, Bootsma would make headlines after information surfaced that he had been sending explicit photographs of himself to women, with one of the victims being as young as 15 years old. This resulted in the Young Blues contract being instantly terminated by Carlton. Bootsma would return to his home state of Western Australia and sign with Peel Thunder, but never return to high-level football. We are close to 5,000 subscribers on this channel. If you enjoy the football content, please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel and comment a promising player from your football club that you can remember that had high prospects but ruined their career. Harley Bunnell is possibly one of the biggest what-if stories in the AFL who showed glimpses of brilliance when on the field. Bunnell was drafted at pick number two in the 2010 draft, forming part of the inaugural Gold Coast Suns team. In his junior years, Bunnell was offered a scholarship with the Australian Institute of Sport in 2009 and garnered attention from scouts that same year when he experienced a significant growth spurt. During the under-18 championships for Western Australia, Bunnell would be a standout performer and his efforts were rewarded when he received the Lark Medal for the best player of the tournament. His performances for Western Australia earned him the number two selection and a spot in the inaugural Gold Coast Suns match against Carlton in 2011. Issues started to become evident pretty early in Bunnell's career when he was dropped from the side for disciplinary reasons after round three. Eventually getting slot back into the senior side, Bunnell was then dropped again for missing a compulsory training session and remaining in Western Australia for longer than was allowed after Gold Coast faced the Eagles away. With trust seemingly at a low point between Bunnell and his fellow teammates, Bunnell was given the chance to play in round 15 against Fremantle by the coaching team. However, the player leadership group agreed to disallow this and he wouldn't play until the following week. After his return in round 16, Bunnell would string together some consistent game time and play every match for the remainder of the season 
playing 14 games and kicking 14 goals in his debut season. He would seemingly learn from his mistakes in his first year and get back on track, showing his true capabilities and potential when he would play every game the following season in 2013, kicking 25 goals and finishing second in the best and fairest, only behind Gary Ablett Jr. Bernal would play the next three seasons, averaging 22 disposals and over one goal per game. However, a leaked photo of Bernal allegedly displaying him preparing white powder to inhale would surface and make the media rounds, resulting in the young mid being traded from Gold Coast to Fremantle. However, Bernal didn't as much as make a dint at Fremantle due to a string of soft tissue injuries that would cause him to only play two games over four years with the Dockers. And in June 2019, he'd part ways with Fremantle. In 2020, Bernal signed with the Melbourne Demons, working his way to the senior team and playing his first game in three years in round two of the 2020 season. Bernal would play against his old side Gold Coast in round six, kicking a goal, showing signs that he might bounce back from his personal struggles. Yet, he still couldn't stay away from trouble as he would be suspended for four games of 2021 and his actions causing Melbourne to be fined $50,000 as he would breach the AFL's COVID-19 protocols by leaving the Gold Coast hub during the 2020 lockdown. After five games for the Demons, Bernal would announce his retirement from football, ending what many believe was a waste of talent. Ahmed Saar's inspirational entrance into AFL started at the age of 16 when the Egyptian immigrant was invited to play football for Roxburgh Park just to fill the numbers for his high school. Then, with the encouragement of his family, he would go to a pre-season training for the Preston Bull Ants VFL club in 2009 uninvited. Despite not being on anyone's radar, Saad pushed himself into the system, eventually being selected into the squad. By 2011, Saad was a regular feature for the Bull Ants and would kick 50 goals in a season winning the league's most promising young player award. His 2011 season caught the attention of AFL recruiters and at the end of the season, six years after he had kicked his first footy, Ahmed Saad was picked by GWS and traded to St Kilda. Saad didn't waste time making his impression at the elite level, kicking 45 goals from 29 games in 2012 and 2013, and gaining notoriety for his extremely long run-up that produced high accuracy. However, at the end of the 2013 season, Saad's young career would take a turn for the worst when he tested positive to a banned substance. The substance in question was in an energy drink that he consumed called Before Battle. As a result of the positive test, Saad received an 18-month ban from the AFL and was delisted by the Saints. He would receive a second chance by the Saints in 2015, but only play four more games before being delisted again. Saad would open up about his issues when he appeared on the Fair Dinkum podcast. So I got banned for 18 months from Asada because I took a... Uh, at the time it was a performance enhancing substance on game day which allows you to get that's when Asada steps in and you can get banned for up to two years yeah, it was just a pre-workout um, I had been taking it for a couple of years but on that for, for that year in particular I'll say the year I got banned it had just got put on the banned substance list it was um, banned on game day only so you could have it for breakfast lunch and dinner Monday to Friday train with it all that kind of stuff and then, yeah, it got banned on match Just day. Match day yeah. Yeah. Literally <laughs> out of nowhere, you know? So I'm, I'm, I'm shitting myself. I'm like, this is my career done. Like, I've worked so hard, so hard to get here. Lawrence Angwin was selected at pick 12 by the Adelaide Crows in the 2000 draft. His grandfather, Andy Angwin, was a player for Hawthorne who won the 1940 Best and Fairest. Angwin did not last a season for Adelaide due to mental health struggles as well as injuries. The Crows would part ways with him and he would return to Melbourne and be picked up by the Blues in the rookie draft. He showed promise for a struggling Carlton team when he was one of a few players to keep the competitive edge against West Coast, shooting two goals on the run. At 200 centimetres, Angwin was commended for his leaping and marking ability. However, his behaviour and attitude would be his downfall, as Angwin would find himself in trouble when at 21 years old, he would receive a sentence of 100 hours community service for stealing from a fellow teammate's house. He would then arrive to training in a drug-induced state, resulting in his immediate sacking and a wasted four-game career.